All right guys, today we're gonna continue our movement series with our lower body cars. We already went over some of this stuff with the ankle and the knee, we're gonna go over that again in a little bit more depth. And then we're gonna go over the hips, which is a big one. This way we can start to make some movement on becoming pain-free and moving a heck of a lot better. So again, cars are controlled articular rotations, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to use the muscles to stretch our joints as hard as we possibly can, and we're trying to make the biggest circles with our joints that we possibly can. So it's easy to kind of conceptualize with ball and socket joints like the hips, but how do we do that with things like the knees? Well, that's what we're gonna go over. And once you start doing that, once you start taking your knees and your joints through different ranges of motion that they're designed to do, but haven't done in a long time, you're gonna start to experience some joint relief in a very short period of time and definitely some increased performance and awareness of your body position. So first, let's start with cars on the ankle. I'm going underneath grabbing my forearm and my knee like this. And again, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use the muscles in my lower leg to pull myself in the farthest possible ranges of motion that I can. So if you don't do this with high intensity, it's not gonna work very well. All right, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to take these joint capsules and really push them as hard as we possibly can and pull them. And if we do that over time, we're gonna to start to polish the inside of those joint capsules. Very similar if you take, if you ever seen those rock tumblers where people take rocks from a river and they put it in this thing and it tumbles for days or however long it does, and they start off all jaggedy and rough, and then after a few days, they get really smooth and shiny. That's how we want our joints to be. So in the beginning, it's gonna, it's gonna be rough and it's gonna be hard to control, but if you do these every single day, you're gonna start to really experience some a lot smoother joint movement. So here we go. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the muscles in the front of my leg to really pull up into dorsiflexion as hard as I possibly can. And while I remain dorsiflexed, I'm gonna to start to externally rotate, that's away from the body, my ankle as hard as I can. And now as I'm actually rotating, I'm gonna come into plantar flexion all the way down, and then I'm gonna to start to internally rotate as far as I can and pull it all the way up. Notice that was pretty slow in control, that's what we're trying to do, we're not trying to fly through these fast. So now I'm gonna go the opposite direction, internal rotation into plantar flexion, external rotation, in the dorsiflexion, and then I'm gonna go the opposite direction for that was one rep, now we're starting the second rep. All right, now we're coming back down around into internal rotation, dorsiflexion, external rotation, plantar flexion. Now we're good, we're going back the opposite direction. Good, we're gonna do two on each side. Then we're gonna go to the other side. Again, I'm pulling up as hard as I possibly can. Internal rotation, plantar flexion, external rotation, dorsiflexion, opposite direction. All the way down, squeeze those calves. Pull it into the side all the way up. Good, back around. As hard as I possibly can, I'm pulling, 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 working up a sweat doing this. Just like that, that's two, and I can feel this side's a little bit easier to control than this side. So maybe if I wanna come back and to hit a little bit more on my left side, that'll be beneficial for me. So now I'm gonna come back, arm under the knee again. This time I'm gonna come into this old wrestler's grip right here, hands clasped. Now I'm just doing the knee, so I wanna keep my ankle fixed. Again, we're trying to dissociate the movement of the ankle and the movement of the hip from the movement of the, of the knee. We're just trying to control the knee. So. Uh, this grip here, I'm going to keep my ankle in relative dorsiflexion, not all the way up, but I'm going to keep it relatively flexed. I'm going to flex my knee, and I'm going to externally rotate that knee by rotating out like that. Then I'm going to come into extension, internally rotate, flexion. I'm going to stay here, come back up into flexion, externally rotate, flexion internally rotate, extension, externally rotate, flexion, stay here, externally rotate, all the way up into flexion, internally rotate, extension, boom, just like that, very simple to do, other side, again, I'm pulling up that ankle, I'm going to keep this ankle fixed, external rotation, flexion, sorry, extension, internal rotation, flexion, now I'm gonna stay here, boom, 
Boom, again, I'm trying to go as far as I can. I'm trying to rotate as far as I possibly can. I don't need to all the way extend the knee. I'm gonna try to rotate, rotate, rotate. Back down, I'm gonna stay here and reverse it. Good, all right. Those are our ankles and our knees. Now for our hips, we're gonna be standing and you're gonna to wanna to be holding on to something. Now for the hips, you really wanna be holding on to something because now it's gonna be much more difficult to move the hips. So we really need to work on the irradiating tension that we've already talked about. So I'm gonna hold on to something like this. You can hold on to a handle. It doesn't matter what you hold on to. Just hold on to something so, so you're not just out here. Like this. Now I'm gonna take my other hand. I'm gonna squeeze as hard as I can. Again, I'm trying to make my entire body as tense as I possibly can. Abs are tight. Arms are tight. Back is tight. The, the foot that's on the floor, I'm grabbing that foot into the ground, using the muscles in my feet, squeezing my legs, squeezing my glute. And then what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow me to just control my, my hip. That's what we're trying to do. I don't want to move my hip and then move my spine in order to move my hip more. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to dissociate the movement. So again, I'm holding on to something. I'm going to radiate tension by squeezing my fist. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to internally, sorry, I'm going to externally rotate my legs. I'm going to start to bring my foot up and across my body. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to flex my hip. So it's going to look like this. I'm trying to bring it up as high as I possibly can. And then I'm gonna open this up into external rotation. And then from here, I'm gonna to try to keep my knee fixed. I'm trying to bring my foot up towards the ceiling, bring my hip into ex or internal rotation. Really trying to pull it up. Good, so that's one. Now I'm gonna start, that's half of one I should say. Now we're gonna come back the opposite direction. All the way back. Nice and slow, really try to pull that all the way up. That's one fold. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna do two on each side. Squeeze them really tight. External rotation, flexing the hip all the way up as high as I can. External rotation, internal rotation, and then down. Now I'm coming back. So I'm flexing the knee, everything's tight, tight, tight. Back, squeezing that glute, making this big giant circle, abducting the hip, coming around, flexing, boom, that's two. We do the same thing on the opposite side. You can see I'm starting to pour a little bit of sweat. This stuff is hard, but if you do it really, really quick, every day, that only takes a few minutes. So just for brevity of the video, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm not gonna do that now, but do two on each side. And we'll do one more thing on the ground. This next one here is not necessarily hip cars. I guess it can kind of be classified as hip cars. We're starting to get into the pails and rails, but it's just an amazing stretch that you need to do for your, for your hips. So it's called a 90-90 stretch. I'm trying to have 90 degrees, 90 degrees all around. And what I'm gonna to try to do is, I'll center it a little bit for you. I'm gonna start with my hands behind me and I'm trying to sit up tall. I'm trying to rotate towards my leg that's on the, that's in the back, right? That's gonna make it a little bit more difficult. You're gonna to start to feel that stretch and internal rotation on this side of the hip. But what I'm gonna do is make this active. I'm gonna lean back and I'm gonna to try to keep this knee down on the floor the whole entire time. And I'm gonna to try to open up this hip by keeping that knee down. And I'm trying to pull it open, pull it open until I can't anymore. Okay, now I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Up, hands behind me. Pull it open. Pull it, pull it. Okay, now I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna do the same thing. Try to keep this knee down as much as I, or sorry, this knee down as much as I possibly can as I start to open this up. Pull it, so we're using the muscles on the outside of your hip to really pull it, pull it, pull it, and then rotate. Doing it again one more time. Open it up, open it, open it, open it. And then we can start to flow through these movements. It should be a lot easier. 
These are lower body cars. Do these every day or as many times as you possibly can throughout the week. And I promise you, your hips, your knees, your ankles will feel so much better in a very short period of time.